This week at Coffee and Tools, we're going to do a Delta belt grinder and see what I can do about fixing it and also give you the size of specs and whatever. So in case you have one or come across one and decide you need to have one too for your wood shop or whatever you're working on. The uh, Tonight, tomorrow night, there's supposed to be a uh, meteor shower and everybody should go outside at night and look up at the sky and see, I guess, uh, what, rocks falling from the sky? Yeah, I don't quite, uh, don't quite get that one, but uh, sure. That was, uh, that was quite the meteor shower. Hmm. The, I've seen some different things on the internet about this product. It's a mosquito catcher and the thing I want to point out is there are so many mosquitoes trapped in there right now that this little uh, lizard guy uh, came along and he is really hungry and he's interested in what's in there. I'd love to open the lid and let him in there so he can have something to eat but he'll uh, run off on me if I, if I try to feed him uh, some of these uh, fantastic mosquitoes that are caught in this thing. It's a uh, mosquito catcher they they're only about ten dollars uh, I've seen some different things on the internet said they're you know a fraud they're not really you know something it's a glitch or whatever but the this one here has been catching stuff we probably need to do some kind of review on them I, I bought a couple of them just to try and uh, I'll tell you the truth I'm uh, rather impressed and so is that lizard uh, you just saw go around the corner <laughs> In, the, uh, in a past video, I explained how I installed this on here. And like I said, when I did it, uh, I'm screwed into the 2x4s. But the 2x4s are just stuffed into the panel here so the whole thing can sit. But the beauty of it is uh, if I get the power cord out of the way here. I can remove this from the unit and just carry the whole thing off. At least, that's out of here too. Ah, at least that's the, uh, that's the theory. <laughs> Now, let's see if we can actually do it. Uh, it's a beast. There we go. Okay, she's heavy. Uh, all right. uh, so, here's the old beast, and here's where the problem is. Uh, I can, wow, it's like, I can't believe how heavy these were. From Taiwan, I think. <laughs> the belt, grass, this belt. Sander. Uh, first off, in case anybody needs one, this is 36 inch and the back is a 6 inch disc. It's 4 inch by 36 if you decide you need belts for these bad boys. If you just happen to have a, an old belt around, you're wondering what size that is. Right here, uh, there was a fence. This is another... Yeah, we're doing, we're doing another fence this week. I did a, a bunch of work on a fence for this uh, tack life saw. Now the Delta. Uh, I don't know the history of what happened here and it's really uh, strange because it's missing and I don't know if it was, if it came like that, I don't remember. Uh, I've had this thing a long, long time, uh, gave it away and after about five and a half years it has come back home to me. So uh, I'm going to fix the fence or make a, we're going to build a fence for it I guess because I don't have one and I don't see them online for sale. So. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could do it out of wood. Nah. Uh, we could do it on a 3D printer, but that would be plastic. And I think the fence originally was metal, but there's plastic pieces, shards, back here, which kind of indicates that the original fence was plastic. But we're going to make a metal one, because it'll be a lot better, I think, when we get done. So let's get these plastic pieces off and take a look at them first. So apparently, it was held with... Uh, Oh, plastic's even falling away. Man, these are small screws, too. That is going to make things a little more interesting. Not, uh, yeah, and that one fell off. Let's take the screws off completely for a minute. Anyways, yeah, that's just a thick, heavy uh, piece of plastic. So there's no reason why I couldn't just, uh, on the 3D printer, design uh, a little plastic uh, fence for this. But I have a couple of problems with uh, plastic. It's not like PLA on a 3D printer, for example, 
is not uh, not that great around humidity. It has to be like a controlled climate type area usually to, to stay in really good shape if it's PLA. So I think the best thing to do would just be to take an aluminum bar or something up here, put a 90 in it and come across here, and uh, voila, you have a fence. So here's the first thought would be uh, a piece of uh, angle aluminum. Uh, one eighth, it's not very thick, but it would probably do a pretty good deal is to duplicate the holes here, put the screws back in, uh, cut this here, and do a 90 with it, and just bring it across here, and maybe even slot it a little bit so it's adjustable. But that would give you a fence across here, and we don't need a lot of material. So I think uh, that would be the way to go. Now the only problem I don't like with this is for strength, I would like to be able to uh, go across this with the 90 and have some sort of support where the the bend is uh, if you were doing pipe bending or something you'd probably take something the 90 into account for your measurement but here i think we're just gonna basically bend the tape measure a little bit over it and just kind of get a rough guesstimate on what we need roughly for this uh, looks like the total piece from the bottom come up do the 90 about at two and around about two and a half inch or so go across to seven so seven inches of material in total should give me what i need so we'll cut this at seven we'll, we'll go from there so here's the uh now cut seven inch piece uh that's a little rough on this end that'll be all right so i've got two holes and two small screws that would go in there for the fence so first thing i'm going to do is sort of line that up like this and I guess what I want to do is figure out where that 90 should be and obviously want it above the uh, belt, sanding belt. Actually, this make a good pencil sharpener. Let's check. Wow, yeah. The, uh, so the situation here is to try to get this lined up on the bottom of this just so it's, we have some kind of reference point and that'll help me keep this fairly relatively straight, I think. And then I'm going to have to cut just above the belt. So that's about where my 90 should, should roll over. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to have to pick these uh, screws up. And I want them... Yeah, uh, I might even take a good quick look at that. I've got some... Uh, let's have a, another look about here. And I don't want to oversize them, so... I want to make them just a just a fractional bit bigger than what these are. The head of the screw is nice and big, so I could go almost quarter inch or something, and I'd still have lots of slop or whatever. So the next thing we got to do is cut. So I'm just going to cut this off across here, make a slice with a hacksaw and uh, my uh, vise, and then we're just going to fold it over in the vise, and hopefully that should give me my 90. Now the 90 should start before this and it should finish after this because you use a certain amount of material when you do the 90. So when I make the cut here, I'm actually going to bend it down here just a, just a, about a, oh, an eighth of an inch lower or so. Okay, we're back. Uh, I bent this, well, I cut it with a hacksaw down to here, put in the vise just down below the cut and then did the bend, took a hammer, and kind of made a pretty nice little 90. So this will go up right here on the screws. And hopefully uh, that'll work as a, a basic fence. It's really uh, it closed up a little bit tighter there. Yeah. And of course, uh, like everything on YouTube, I kid you not, I uh, took a, a shot at at this with the drill and the holes are dead on where they need to be so we're good there i'm going to put these screws back in and just have a look at this fence and see how we did overall Oop, there we go and the lower screw all right all right extra tight yep. oh yeah and <clears throat> this thing has a slight bend in it so that's for me folding it over in the vise. And again, I don't know how critical that is because really 
when you're doing a piece of lumber, uh, you sort of want to, you know, this business, if you're making one of those gigantic Jenga sets or something, not really sure. But uh, at least this way, I do, I do have a fence, and it seems to be pretty stiff. So that's, uh, I'm going to call it a done deal, except I need to take a vi uh, file, and we're going to get rid of these sharp edges. Always, always. Very good. Now, the only thing i got to do now is, uh, yeah, there we go. Man, it's, whoop, it's a little bit of bird edging right there. Just going to, yeah. Yeah, so now we got to put her back, pick her up, and put her back in the hole. <laughs> Could be, this might be even possibly one of the heaviest. It might be one of the heaviest tools I own, I think. I don't know. Wow. Now, the old girls put on weight. But, anyways, we have a little fence here now uh, for whatever. I don't see the. Yeah, I don't think it's a really big deal, but uh, it's nice to have some kind of a fence. Just need to take a vacuum clean, cleaner to it now. And, Get all this nasty sawdust off it again. Uh, this was six inch. Now the other thing I did with this when I cleaned it off, the old, uh, the old disc that was on here was held on by. It's, it's, these are held on by glue. They just stick on, and all the old stuff was really uh, bonded. So what I did was I took uh, regular lighter fluid, a little can of Zippo lighter fluid, and I wiped, took this off, and wiped this all down. Got it nice and clean. Let it dry. And then I stuck a brand new uh, six inch disc. And what I did here was I ordered uh, stick, and, stick it and sand. That's, that's a stick on type uh, sanding disc. And of course I also ordered, as you can see, uh, various, various grits of belts. 36 by four inch, just, just in case uh, anyone out here gets a hold of one of these and doesn't know what size of belt these take. And that the belt change is so easy it is absolutely amazing and all you have to do is pull this lever back lock it like that you can slide your belt off slide your new belt on bring this back now this is going to tune to get the belt to stay in the center when it's running <clears throat> and this will change only a little bit under load conditions but otherwise this is just your fine tuner right here um, that's about as much as I can say about the old uh, belt and disc uh, delta sander today. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools, and thank you for subscribing, and uh, we'll see you next week with another cool project. Adios.